So let's talk about data. Let's talk first about the green seeker numbers. Those will be the ones that will be fractions like 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4. What did you all find when you did that? Were di first of all, did you find differences really between the tillage systems? Or were they all about the same? Now, ask yourself a question. Why do you think the wheat in the tilled system is showing less vigor, it's got less biomass, than the wheat in the no-till or the vertical till? First of all, did you expect that to be the case? Almost nobody does, but there is a biological reason why it's true. As the ground turns cold, that mulch is like an insulator. So the same thing that makes a no-till soil colder in the spring, which is the mulch, makes a no-till soil warmer in the fall, which is the mulch. So that wheat got off to just a little better start, got a little bit more growth on it, and it's detectable now as we're coming out of the wintertime, okay? So that's what I found in my numbers. It's not a lot, but it is significant, you know, it's significant and it's occurred across the reps. Now, who has some of the chlorophyll meter data on these strips? All right, so you have a contrast. You have a better chlorophyll meter reading where you did tillage than where you either had vertical or no till. That's at least that's what I would expect anyway from your all's data. Anybody got any on that? feeling out why that happened? Mineralization. Mineralization in the tilled environment you stimulate mineralization, you release some nitrogen. Also, the fact that you have lower biomass means that as that nitrogen is made available, the wheat root system stays warmer longer. It grabs that nitrogen, but it can't make a lot of shoot with it, so it tends to concentrate it, so you end up with higher readings on the chlorophyll meter, even though the wheat's not quite as vigorous, doesn't have quite as much biomass. It's these kind of clues and cues that affect these machines the way they work for you if you're using these tools. Now, clearly the white flag is the tilled environment. Got pinks and blues, so which one is vertical and which one is pure straight up no-till? These guys have already given me their opinion. What do the rest of you think? Therefore, pink is no-till. Now, does anybody know why why the vertical till that Dr. Ritchie and I set up here is actually kind of hard to distinguish from no-till. These guys were looking at how flattened out some of the stalks were and they thought maybe that was where the vertical till had run and that's not a bad thought but the whole area had been flail chopped. High but it had been flail chopped so that does take out part of the cue you might get from that. What's the one thing we did that a lot of vertical till operators don't do? or one of the things we didn't do that they do. Did we run our vertical tillage straight on or did we gang angle it? We ran it straight on. If you're gonna run a disc, running a di vertical tillage tool at an angle is running a disc. You might as well buy somebody's old disc real cheap and run it. I mean, I don't understand why a vertical tillage tool has to have gang angles on it. I really don't. If you want to run your stocks at an angle, just take off at an angle and run your darn stocks. But otherwise, what are you doing here? Now obviously, there has been a story by the people who like to sell steel, there's a story about how vertical tillage will make a little better environment. But we've already done stand counts here, and we've seen no differences in the stand counts. I mean, there's some statistical variability, but there's no difference in stand counts. The stand counts are actually as good in all three systems right now. So the real question is how these crops grow off. I'm not expecting a big difference, but we'll see what happens. One of the reasons we left these as really large plots is so that we can get kind of a better integrated response and try to reduce our small scale variability by swamping it out. So the bottom line is, this is the first year of this study where the vertical tillage has been inserted in here. On the other hand, if you check on Fast Lane, you will find hundreds of vertical tillage tools parked in the weeds. I have a feeling I'm not going to be doing much here to challenge that trend. So I just want to share that with you. 
This work is sponsored though by the Kentucky Small Grain Growers, so those of you who contribute to that checkoff, this is one of the more practical projects they funded um, to try to get some answers that will help people going forward, okay? So we hope to get some good data monitoring how the crop grows. We're also going to make some measurements of soil physical properties uh, as we go through here, and that's how I want to leave it. I don't think the fact that this crop is a little bit behind in terms of biomass, I really don't think it's going to matter a whole lot, but it would clearly trigger a little bit different decision based on whether you use the chlorophyll meter or you use the green seeker to guide your nitrogen management. You get a little bit lower on the one, you get a little bit higher on the other, so it could have an effect that way, okay? Typically speaking, in corn anyway, we would recommend a little bit less nitrogen where the tilled environment was because the tillage, as Clint brought up, stimulates mineralization. You're going to get that nitrogen from mineralization anyway. Might as well use it. Don't lose it.